All right, welcome to the very first episode of Pat Plays Red Rescue Team. For those of you unfamiliar with this game, this is a dungeon crawling Pokemon game. It's really fun. It's probably one of my top five games of all time. Would actually, actually, that would be Explorers of Sky, which is kind of the sequel to this. Uh, but this is a really fun game. So I'm going to try to answer this uh, in a way that gives me certain Pokemon. So we'll see if I can actually get that done. Many things that you would like to do. Sure. Uh, no. Uh, not happy. Scream from behind the door, react, scream in unison, let's say. Uh, no. Uh, yes. Uh, I think the little finger is what I want. Yes. I'm a boy. Okay. The sassy type. Okay, I think this is Mudkip, if I'm not mistaken. Which, Mudkip's fine. Um, it's really not what I want, but that's okay. If this is Mudkip. It could be, uh... Uh... It could be Pikachu or something. I don't know. Let's see. Trico! Yeah, we'll do Trico. Trico's really hard. Um... I'm gonna be honest. All of the grass types are, are very difficult. Um... And it also kind of really seriously limits the amount of uh, the Pokemon you can get with you. But... Because I'm going Trico... Let's see, let's think for a second. Um, Trico struggles with fire types and flying types and <laughs> ice types. Let's see. Okay, and what are we gonna be really running into? We're gonna be running into a good deal of fire uh, throughout this. Not a whole lot of electric types or or water type or, or grass types. So we might actually just roll with a uh, a water tarp ah, water type starter. My bad. Uh, we'll we'll go ahead and grab Totodile here. And, uh, we will obviously name, uh, Totodile after my partner, uh, business partner, not, not, like, romantic partner, that's my wife, uh, James here. I just feel like I need to clarify that in this day and age. Um, and we'll be continuing on. So this story is actually pretty fun. Um, it's a little bare bones as far as kind of rescue team stories go. I think they, it definitely peaked with Explorers of Sky. Sky is just, you know, I can't praise it enough, but this game walked so that Sky could run. So I, I definitely want to play this game. It's actually not too long either. I think there's like 20 dungeons in the main, uh, quest line, which is really easy to get through. Actually, the first three are kind of just a breeze. Uh, I'm going to look to get the first two done in this episode. Um... I think that that's actually not not that bad of a of a goal, let's say. Um, but yeah, so basically right now, all that's happened is that we're a human that went through this, this portal and transformed into uh, the Seer Trico. So, nothing, nothing groundbreaking necessarily speaking, and uh, we met this person first, so we have to tell them our name, which is going to just be... Pat. Yep, the name Pat is okay. Apparently that's a very funny name to uh, James the Total Dial. But uh, now this is where we get our first mission here, right from the get-go. It doesn't waste any time. And we're gonna go help out uh, Butterfree here. She's, she needs uh, her kid Caterpie to be rescued, so we will go ahead and take care of that. Weird little thing in this game that uh, is like kind of a post-game thing, but it's not really spoiling anything. But, like, apparently evolution isn't, like, a big deal. Like, people don't know what evolution- or evolution is a big deal, and people don't know what it is, and nobody evolves. Which is wild to me, because this Butterfree was just- is just a Butterfree. And the Caterpie is always a Caterpie. So I'm like, I don't know what's going on there. Anyway, so... We are going to start off by- oh, I always forget this. Uh, B is actually the menu. Um, so we're just going to go ahead and set this, and we are going to uh, switch off Leer here. And what that does is basically, when we go over here, um, so yeah, the Pokey's money is a little um, yellow thing. If I hold down the uh, left button and press A, then I will actually use Pound. Otherwise, I just do a regular attack, and it does, like, kind of minuscule damage. Uh, but you want to make sure you use the actual moves, because then you'll get the full XP. If you don't, then you only get half XP. Um, so we also want to make sure that we go ahead and go to the dungeon, and we want to go do fast. And we're changes, because otherwise you're just going to crawl. 
Uh, like, really, it's actually really slow. So, I, I would recommend just doing that for everyone. Um, so yeah, you always go first. We're gonna check down here. Oh, it's just more money. Okay. I don't really care about money early game, because you're not gonna get anything more than, like, I think 30 pokey. But, I might as well pick it up, because it's there. Uh, what we want is a Blast Seed in one of the first three dungeons, so we'll just pick up this Orange Berry. At this point in time, I think we only carry one item. Uh, not that it matters, because it's the end of the dungeon, and that's it. So you get little tool tips for the first, uh, I think it's either two or three dungeons. On um, basically how the mechanics work. This first dungeon, it's almost impossible to lose in, because the enemy Pokemon do, like, almost no damage. I think they're all, like, level one or level two. Um, you also can't recruit anybody, and this will come into play probably next episode when we learn about recruitment there. Uh, but you can't recruit anybody in this first dungeon, so never try doing it. I, I honestly just don't even do contracts in it. It's There's no reason to. Um, anyway, so now we've reunited Caterpie with his mom, uh, which is this Butterfree here. So they want our names, and I'm James and Pat, and we are a team that has yet to get a name. So, Caterpie, uh, this, this becomes a recurring theme, but Caterpie is our biggest fan. And, uh, he actually is, comes in clutch later on in the, uh, in the game, so. Don't discount Caterpie. Um, so we'll get a bunch of berries from, uh, this Butterfree here, which is nice. And that's kind of how the game mechanics work, is you basically complete, uh, rescue missions, or contracts is what I call them. Um, and, uh, you get points towards your team that allows your team to level up and then also uh or, or like your team rank rather to rank up so you go from like normal to bronze to silver to gold so on and so forth and then um uh and then you also get items you can get certain items only through these quests too so it's really nice um so yeah this is uh, apparently james's house but it's the most grass centric place i've ever seen so i have no idea how this is where he lives but whatever so, of course, uh, I am impressed. And, uh, mailbox here, just ignore that. I almost never check it because it saves, like, 15 seconds every single time that you start a new day. Because then you don't have to wait for Pelipper to come over. Because Pelipper will not deliver mail to you if your mailbox is full. So, you'll see a mail full mailbox in the future at some point. And, uh, just I straight up won't, won't check it. So, we're gonna form a team here. I need a team name. I figure you guys can probably guess as to what the team name is going to be. Uh, and we're just going to go with Nightmow. It's the name of the channel. It's a J name uh, James came up with when he was like 14, so that's why it's super edgy. Alright. And there we go. Easy enough. But yeah, this is actually not a bad... Um, team comp I have here. Like I said, I think grass starters are the worst, just objectively, but I would rather be the grass Pokemon than have the grass Pokemon as my teammate. Because if you have the grass Pokemon as your teammate, they'll just YOLO in and die on a regular basis. But if you're the guy, then, you know, you can kind of control that. Also, the music in this game is fantastic. Now, again, not as good as Sky, but it is really good. So we're going to start the next morning. Also, the graphics and the design of the game are top-notch. I mean, look at this room. This is actually pretty fantastic for uh, a Game Boy game, a Game Boy Advance game. Um, albeit, it's it's like a semi-DS game, because blue is for the DS and red was for this game. Also, if you put the two box arts of, uh, of those two games, you actually form a picture, which was then used in the remake of this game. Rescue Team DX as the actual cover art for that game, which is just so, such a fantastic little detail. And that's why I, like, I really like these spin-off games, because they show so much heart, and they're not super constrained by the narrative formula of the mainline games, so they can do a lot of really cool experimental stuff that you see here. Alright, so James has been waiting outside, and he passed out because he's just so excited to see his new friend, which is me, because I'm awesome. It makes sense. I mean, wouldn't you be excited? But yeah, so Crocodilla here, um, and I will be going on our first, like, official rescue team mission. That And these, like, story-driven missions don't actually give you any points, but it's the ones you take later that are kind of randomly generated that do. And there's ways to cheat by, uh, essentially, uh, 
This is just a bunch of crap that they're giving me. I'm just gonna talk over all this exposition. I don't really care about it. Um, all you need to know is that I got all my stuff that I need for a rescue team. Um, anyway. So, the, uh, you can kind of cheat the game a little bit by, uh, putting in Wonder Mail codes, and that'll give you, uh, randomly, that'll give you generated, uh, requests that you can change the reward for. So, let's say I want to make it so that I have to, uh, save someone on floor two of this dungeon or something like that. I can do that. And then it gives me a golden seed, which is plus five levels. So, which would be broken. So that's, like, a way that you can actually cheat the game if you want to take, like, the five minutes to put in all those codes. And it's a really nice replayable feature if you just kind of want to breeze through the game and then get to, like, later on with a different team or something like that. So, but abusing it kind of will screw you in actually enjoying the game. Yeah, so this is Pelipper. Pelipper takes forever to deliver mail. And I'm not quite sure why... That's their mode, but we're gonna check the mailbox and we've got a rescue job. And this rescue job is from Magdamite. And Caterpie apparently has been telling everybody about how fantastic we are, which is a good thing. Caterpie basically runs our PR firm for the team. So we're gonna go ahead and head on out to Thunder Wave Cave. What has happened is two Magnemite have been uh, basically hit with an electric mag magnetic pulse and they're now stuck in the back. Um, that is not enough to form a magneton, so this is a critical uh, issue that we're gonna go solve, me and uh, this crocodile. So this is where it gets a little bit tougher, but it's not really that much tougher. And I expect to probably maybe grow like a level or two in here. Um, so apples, this is important to know. Uh, apples fill your belly. So if I go to my menu here, you can see down there on the top, right of the bottom of a uh, kind of little text box that's your belly you don't want that to hit zero because once that hits zero every action you take costs one health point and as you can see i'm taking like 20 in this room alone so like walking forward attacking anything like that anytime a turn ends basically so but the belly problem won't really come into play early on but it will come into play uh later on in the game so if that's a blast seed that'd be awesome as a sleep seed, uh, sleep seeds are okay. Uh, I really need a blast seed. Two would be perfect. One is kind of basically the minimum, because this first, uh, this first guy is going to be a uh, an absolute just horrible boss if I don't have it, because I do not have a fire type or an electric type on my team for that matter. Um, so and that'll come into play when you actually see what, who I'm facing. So I'm just going to go ahead and uh, take out the Puchiana, and that's enough for us to get in the level. So this is actually not a bad place to um, uh, to grind a little bit, because these these last two floors, floor 4 and floor 5, have uh, Electro, or Electro, Voltorb and Elicid in it. Um, oh, screwed. Messed that up. Okay, so you just got poisoned, uh, and this is a good time to talk about conditions and whatnot. Uh, unfortunately, I don't have a Pokemon that doesn't have a, a second ability, but if you have a Pokemon that has two abilities, you actually will have both of them. Um, so you don't have to worry about that. Also, like, you don't really have a nature. Uh, if I can see my team. Um, so yeah, so you don't have a nature here, but you do have your special abilities, and, uh, you have your, uh, in, like, basically information in your friend area, where you got the, uh, Pokemon and the size. Which, um, is not going to come into play at any point, really. Um, so we're just going to go ahead and grab this berry. And the way do you cure uh, status conditions such as poison, because that will stay with you for the rest of the uh, floor, <coughs> is either with a berry or by going to the next floor. Um, the way you cure these conditions... I'm just going to wait for this guy to walk up to me. Um... The way you can cure these positions is actually walking on that little uh, square with the uh, green arrow on it. That's how you cure that. So you can see my stats will now return to normal. Otherwise, those stick with you the whole floor. And uh, any of your conditions really leave once you once you go to the next floor, which is a nice way of kind of cl cleansing yourself. But uh, yeah, Blasty, perfect. That's exactly what I want. One more of these and then we're kind of in business. Um, it's a good way of doing dealing a... Um, Oh, another one. Oh, so we're good to go now. 
It's a good way of dealing a consistent 20 damage to uh, any Pokemon. And early on, the first boss, I think, only has like 40 HP or something like that, so... Uh, it'd be really easy to take on. So these Voltorbs will give us 42 XP, which is pretty high at this point in the game. Uh, Elekid will give us 55, which is also really nice. Uh, and you can also recruit them basically right away, with, right when you get the first uh, set of uh, friend areas. Uh, one fun fact is if you start with a Charmander, you can actually recruit an Aeron early on in the game. Otherwise, you cannot recruit Aeron right away. Um, which kind of sucks. If you like Aeron, I don't particularly care. Um, so what had just happened there was that's an Elekid. Um, Elekid has a move called Quick Attack, which is actually a ranged attack in this game. So it covers two range, and I'm about to get my crap pushed in, so I'm just going to go ahead and eat the orange Berry here. Uh, otherwise, he would kind of attack me. <coughs> um, so we're just going to take these guys out, and this will give us a good amount of EXP, actually. Um, and you can see the uh, controls here are actually pretty, pretty clean. In order to use my basic attacks, I'm holding on the L button and pressing A. In order to get those uh, kind of diagonals to show up, I'm holding on the R button. Uh, and it's kind of a little smooth thing. You kind of get used to it as you play up through the game more. And another Blast Seed, that's awesome. Uh, blast Seeds are just really good in general. They just do they do a consistent amount of damage. They're better than, I think, uh, Graveler Rocks at this point is what I have as my ranged, like, free ranged item. And here we go, another level. <coughs> so like I said, I was expecting to get basically two levels in this dungeon, so that's really good. <coughs> so we'll just continue on, and there's the end of the dungeon. We'll pick up this ten, ten dollars and just go to the end. So we have uh, rescued this Magnemite. So that's two of the first 20 dungeons down. That's like 10% of the game. Just to give you an idea. It does get, like, obviously, you're not going to a new dungeon every single mission. Um, so it does slow down a little bit. And the, then there's this whole segment in the, in the game that's really, really fun. But And I will be planning for that because I know how to plan ahead. The first time I played this game, I was not prepared for it whatsoever because I had no idea what was happening. Um... Yeah, so now we just got a whole bunch of stuff. The Reviver Seed is necessary for, like, everything. It is super critical. But the, uh, the Pokey I could live without. I don't really care about the Pokey. Anyway, so we just completed our first mission as a rescue team, and we are now going to sleep. <coughs> Where I'm sure nothing weird will happen. And that is a, uh, that is me foreshadowing. So here we are asleep. Just perfectly peaceful, and uh, we're now entering a dream sequence. So this will be reoccurring throughout the throughout the game. Uh, so we will not know who this is, but it will be revealed to us in time. And they're actually kind of important, and they're actually important in the post game too, which is kind of fun. And you can recruit them. <laughs> So, which is wild. Uh, anyway, we're just gonna continue on. So, I better check the mailbox. Check the mailbox. There was no mail seeking our help. So, we're just gonna we're gonna do a couple things here and set up for this next mission. It was empty. I know. It's tragic. Yep. So now we're gonna head over to Pokemon Square, and this is kind of the main hub of the game. So you have Kecleon store, this is where you can just buy basic goods. Uh, you have the bank, so if you faint in a dungeon you lose all your money, but if you store it here then you're totally fine. Uh, then you have Gulpin, which links moves, and that is actually pretty crazy because what you can do, especially early on, is you can link Leer and Pound, for example, and what you'll do is you'll actually use those in quick succession. So you'll Leer the Pokemon, reducing the defense and then hitting with Pound. It is crucial if you want to actually just completely sweep through the game. Not necessary, but it is really strong. Um, but if you run out of PP in either one of the moves, they get delinked, and they, there goes all your money. So that kind of sucks. But we're going to go to the bank. Um, actually, we don't want to deposit. Uh, yeah, we... No, no, we're going to go check this store first. So we're just going to go to the store and see what you guys have. 
buy. Uh, ooh, a reviver seat. That's pretty big. Um, the rest of the stuff I, I can do without. Uh, we'll go here. I think we just need to jump off a couple items. So early game, you get a bunch of just necessity items. Um, uh, so, so I, I can just use L and R to pick uh, several. I think I really only need one. So we'll just go ahead and sort real quick. Um, I don't need any of these apples. That I can do without them. Uh, the blast seed, I only need one of those. Don't really need the sleep seed and don't need the raw seed. So. so we'll go ahead and put those in storage. And that's it. That's all we need to do there. Uh, down south here, this is also a really important thing. He's not here right now, but this is the Mukahita uh, Dojo. And that's a really good place to go get EXP early on. Uh, we're certain dungeons. So we'll go this way. Over here, this is the message board. So this is where you get all of your uh, all of your rescue jobs. They're going to be posted on that little red thing there. In the remake, they actually give you a fast travel point too here, which is really fun. <coughs> so then that's kind of what's being explained to me right now. We're going to check it out. Uh, we don't want any of the Tiny Woods ones. Uh, we will take the these things. What is this? It gives me 100 pokey. Eh, okay, that's fair. So we'll take all of those. And uh, that way, we can actually do four of them right after this mission. <coughs> and that'll give us uh, 20 points. And then the next mission, hopefully, we actually can get six. Uh, six missions. So that'd be pretty cool. Anyway, we should continue on this way. We'll be getting our, our next... Uh, Mission uh, right after this, so we'll just hold on to the pokey. There's no real, no reason to deposit it. Um, oh, dude, this is just gonna let me go. Okay, we're we're gonna pause here then, uh, and we'll make sure. I I could have sworn that we uh we did the third dungeon right afterwards, but I guess not. We'll just uh we'll just hang out here. We'll make sure we save the game. But that is the first episode, folks, and we already are cruising. We are moving very quickly. We've gotten everything we need to set up for the first boss, so it should be pretty easy. Uh, and I am very excited to share this series with you guys. So if you guys like this, please like and subscribe down below. I swear the rest of the episodes are not going to be nearly as information heavy up front. I just want to make sure I communicate what's going on in the game because it might not be immediately obvious to players. So, but... Please have a uh, fun rest of your guys' week, and I hope to see you again next time. Take it easy, guys.